Okay, here's Mr. Bucky, and he's going to try to explain some of this stuff. I've got a lot of questions, but anyway, let's see what he can find out from the scripture. Well, I had questions too, of course, Miss Willis. Uh, and I've gone to the scriptures, and I want to read from Genesis, the 25th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Let's see what we have here. Give us some clue as to who these people might be. Uh, uh, we're talking about Isis or Isil or whatever the name is, well, and who else? There's a couple more groups. All right. Well, all of it's Al Qaeda, and the uh, then Al Qaeda's got a Koran group now that we're hearing about. All of these are militants, terrorists, really. So but why uh, are they trying to kill us? Well, they want to do. It. It's kind of like remember when we had the Crusades, uh, when the um, Christians went over and. They were going uh, to kill it. The land yeah, and they were going to kill everybody who Christ. killed Jesus, right? Right. Yeah. So really, this is the jihad movement is really the opposite. On the other side, it's the Muslims kind of crusade, if you want to say it. And these, some of them are very militant, and these are the terrorists. Excuse me. <clears throat> so let me go ahead and read this from uh, the 25th chapter, and then we can discuss it a little bit. The first, starting in the first verse, Abraham took another wife. This is after Sarah died, of course. Abraham took another wife, and whose name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimran, Jokshan, Median, Midian, Mishbak, and Shia. And then in the third verse, they list the the sons of these sons. Let's so go. How, how many sons were there? Well, originally they were uh, what? Uh, about, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six sons, and then they listed who the grandchildren were uh, in verse three and four. So uh, actually we covered about three generations here. Yeah. And, uh, but let's look at verse five a minute. A, uh, Genesis 25, five. Abraham gave all he had to Isaac. Now this was a matter of his estate. He left it to Isaac. So what about these other sons that he had? Well, well what about Ishmael? Was he in there anymore? No, Ishmael now, he's still around, but he's, you know, he, he lived, he was banished. You know, Sarah sent him away. Yeah. And um, so after Sarah sent him away, he lived in another, another place. He lived probably in this area, in, uh, in the area where the Muslims are now, of course. And, but he and Isaac remained friends because we know in the scripture here, in, in, uh, actually in verse 9, that Isaac and Ishmael, Abraham's sons, buried him in the cave at, at Machlach. So the, the, two, the two sons were obviously friendly, you know. So th this, is, this is something we need to remember. Now let's look at verse 5. He gave all he had to Isaac, but these sons, he, he gave gifts, and while he was still living, he sent them away from his son Isaac. So they were sent away too. So this is what, what I believe happened, and this is strictly an opinion. Uh, what I believe happened is this. These sons and, grands, grandchildren, and grandsons and, and great-grandsons uh, are the militants that we, are, we see in that land today. But not all of them are militants. It's just uh, the Arab people. This is right. who the Arab people well, are. I don't believe that Ishmael's descendants are included in this group. You don't? Uh, no. I, Mike, for example, these uh, responses that we're now, we're now bombing oh, Syria and uh, Iraq to, to get rid of the, you know, to, to destroy the ISIL. We'll get to that in a minute. But uh, who are these people who are helping us? part of the Arab, those Arab planes that are with us now. Who are they? I believe, like Jordan and Saudi Arabia and 
uh, all, all of these areas that are friendly with us and supplying us with planes, and they're part of the coalition going against ISIS, or ISIL as they call themselves now. So I, I believe that there were some good uh, Muslims, descendants of Ishmael. And, but these sons that were sent away, their children and grandchildren, they would have been Abraham's great-grandchildren, all the way, three generations here. I believe that's where our problem lies. Now, <clears throat> let's look at how this ISIS came about. ISIS is really a branch of Al-Qaeda. And so is a, a group now called the Koran. Um, Khorasan, excuse me. These are seasoned Al-Qaeda veterans. And ISIS used to be a part of Al-Qaeda, but they kicked them out. They were so brutal. So what have we got here? We've got an Islamic state in Iraq and Syria, which we call ISIS. But also, they call themselves ISIL. Where did that come from? Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. And the Levant covers all of that eastern Mediterranean area. Uh, actually, it's 400 miles north to south. That would be from the border of Syria and Turkey down to uh, the uh, Sinai Peninsula. So that's what 400 you, miles. What are you saying? Are you saying they're claiming that land? That's right. They're claiming that land. And guess what is in that land? Israel. Israel. They are claiming Israel for their own territory. Now, they've already taken all of these cities in, in Iraq. And what they intend to do is take the whole area from 70 to 100 miles wide. Okay? This is a... <laughs> This includes all of the Syria, Jordan, Israel. It includes all of Israel too. Yes. Gracious. And that this is where they're. This is what they want to do. This is what they're saying they do. Well, they have. They are very brutal, and the difference in them and Al Qaeda is that they actually have territory. They actually are, are living off oil wells that they have confiscated. So that's what we're dealing with. That's who we're dealing with. They're, they're out to kill all of the Christians, get rid of all of them from the land, driving them all away, decapitating some, uh, very brutal, brutal murderers. So that's who we're dealing with. Now they call themselves uh, ISIL, which would be the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant. So, uh, regardless of what they're calling themselves, that's who we're fighting right now. And we've got to defend ourselves. And we've got to also, you know, we are friends with Israel. Israel is our best friend in the area. So we, we definitely want to defend Israel um, and be there for them. So I don't, I don't know what you would call this. I, I, some say, well, this is a holy war. Maybe it is a holy war. Nobody wants to call it a holy war. But I believe, really, that it is a holy war. It's a war between the Muslims, these jihadist Muslims, who are just intent on ridding the whole area of Jews and Christians. So that's what we've got. That's what we've got. Are you getting a picture? I'm going to show, well, he, you woke him up then. He, Steely was sound asleep. Steely. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so uh, we really need to be praying for Israel too, don't That's we? That's right, we do. And honestly, I know a lot of people, but listen, whether you're Democrat or Republican, it doesn't make any difference here. This, we're all going to have to be united against these people. These are, these are very brutal killers, they're murderers, um, and we've got to be united. So I thought this morning that we would pray for our leaders, really, and that they will know what to do. Um, I, for one, I'm glad that we are we're bombing now, bombing in Syria and Iraq to try to get rid of them. But uh, we're going to have to pray for our leaders that all those, all the decisions that 
our leaders are making are good decisions. That's what I think. So it makes no difference whether we're Republican or Democrat. I, uh, the Bible tells us we need we are supposed to pray for our leaders and right. ask God to lead them in exactly the way they should go. That's right, Ms. Bills. Yeah. That's it exactly. makes no difference what your your uh, affiliation is, whether it's Democrat or Republican or Independent. Uh, we still we have a leader, and uh, we need to have him do the right thing, and we need God to move on him to do the right thing. Right, and, and also the uh, the leaders in these other countries who That's are right. joining the coalition. That's right. Right now, just watching the news, it almost looks like that all those other countries in the Middle East are pretty much wanting America to take care of the problem. That's exactly but, right. But that's why I'm saying that some of them now, some of those Arab countries have really uh, come with us and joined the coalition. Yeah. But I don't know where Turkey is now. I wish they would come on and be a part of the coalition too. Yeah. But we as and Christ Egypt. we as Christians can pray. I mean God God hears and answers us Absolutely. so we can pray uh, that this will get straightened out and quickly. I don't think that we need no war that's going to last forever. And uh, I think that we need to have a lot of angels protecting our country and our people. And that's that comes through prayer. Yeah. We, we can, uh, our prayers are, God will hear our prayers. That's right. And he's going to answer. Yeah, and I, I want to just mention that uh, when I was out in the garden the uh, day before yesterday, of course, we have uh, bases close to us, uh, and uh, the warplanes were heading over. Even the C-17s were on maneuvers, I'm sure, practicing, and we know that they're getting ready to go over there. So we need to pray for our men in those planes and jets and all that, and that, uh, what do they call it, AWAC that's up there doing all the... Uh, stuff with the radio and identifying right. you know the, the, right. where the targets are we, we need to pray for all those men uh, those boots are there they're just up in the air they are yeah. american boots though okay. sometimes sometimes when when we pray and we don't get an immediate answer uh we we start wondering but that's what god says do put away all this and got doubt I'm going to be there for you. He, he's always going to hear us and answer us. You ready? Yeah. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, Father. And we do thank you that you are our Father. And we thank you for Jesus. And Father, we just ask today that you would protect, protect all of the forces on our side who are trying to their best to get rid of these killers and we just ask that for for protection and guidance and for our leaders father we ask that you would give them integrity give them wisdom give them give them the right answers uh, to what to do and when to do it and what to do about all of these uh, terrorists who are coming against us we thank you, Father, for our leaders, and we just ask that you would be with them today and always as we go through the next uh, days and months and maybe years to come. And we thank you in Jesus' name. And I would like to pray also uh, in the name of Jesus, Father, I ask you to protect each and every one of those pilots and those planes that are flying over this area and uh, just be with them, Father, and uh, just keep all those planes safe, Father. And for all those parents that uh, who have sons who are flying, watch over them. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Father. We thank you so much for being our God and answering our, uh, our prayer. In Jesus' name. All right, well, we will see y'all next time.